awesome week of Northview Kids. We have some amazing things planned for today. We're going to see Marvin. We're going to praise Jesus. We're going to open the Bible. It is going to be such a great time. Let's first spend some time talking to Jesus. Lord Jesus, thank you for loving us, Father. Thank you for dying on the cross. Thank you that we have your word to guide us in our lives, Father. I pray that you will bless these kids this morning. They will understand and know how to use what they're learning in their lives, Father. Bless them. In your name I pray. Amen. All right, guys, let's get started. Yeah. 
Are you okay? No, I'm actually pretty sad today. Oh no, Marvin, yeah. how come you're sad? Well, I got some really bad news today. Oh, bad news is the worst. Yeah, my Grandpa Joe died. Oh no, oh, is that who you're drawing on your picture? Yeah, he was really, really sick for a really, really long time. And then yesterday he died. Oh, well this is a great picture. I love how you used your green crayon. Is that your favorite color? How did you guess? Um, well, it's not done yet, but it's gonna be. And ah, he was the bestest grandpa. We I'm, went fishing together. I'm gonna really miss him. Oh, I'm sure you are. And miss him. Do you know what? This reminds me about Jesus. And he had something bad happen too. He had some bad news that his friend Lazarus died. Oh, is, is that story in the B I B L E? It sure is. Did someone spell Bible? Yeah, I did. He sure did. Hi, Bible investigator guy. Hello, how are you? Well, I hope you have a clue from the Bible with good news today. Because we really need some good yeah. news. There you are. A little bit of good news for you. Oh, thank you. Thanks. Wow, I'm pretty excited to go to the Bible clue room today and get some good news. Alrighty, let's go. Let's go. Hi guys, it is time for our August memory verse and it comes from the book of 1 John. It says, We also know that the Son of God has come. He has given us understanding so that we can know the God who is true. And we belong to the true God by belonging to His Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. 1 John 5.20 Let's read it one more time. We also know that the Son of God has come. He has given us understanding so that we can know the God who is true. And we belong to the true God by belonging to his Son, Jesus Christ. He is the true God and eternal life. 1 John 5, 20. All right, happy memorizing, guys. I'll see you later. So, Pastor Crystal, do you have today's clue? I sure do. Do yeah, you want to hear it? I do. Are you sure you're ready? I, uh, I was born ready. Perfect. Okay. You look for me at Easter, but when you open me, you will be surprised. Hmm. Can you read that one more time, please? I sure can. You look for me at Easter, but when you open me, you'll be surprised. Well, it doesn't rhyme, but it is a riddle. It sure is. Uh, what do you think it is? Hmm. hmm. Um. I wonder if the kids know. Yeah, I think they might know. What do you guys think it might be? Do you think that we're talking about Easter egg? Hey, we looked for Easter eggs at Easter. That's true. Okay, yeah. do you know what, boys and girls? There is an Easter egg in this room. Really? There is, and oh. it is hidden. Okay. So where do you think we hid it? Uh, I let spy me know. with my little eye. Uh, ah! Did you find it? I see it, it's right there, it's green like me. It is, yeah. there it is. Oh, oh, there it is. Chocolate in it. I love chocolate. Oh, oh please mm. be chocolate inside. Well, why don't we look? Oh, yes, please. Okay, are you ready? I am. I'm ready. gonna count to three, and then I'm gonna open it. One, two, two three. Th ah, 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 ah! Ah! Well, what? that is a surprise. Whoa! And kind of disappointing. Yeah. Kind of bad news. How is an empty Easter egg? Good news. Well, I guess that's 
kind of like our Bible lesson, how it talks about Jesus is the resurrection and the life. Yeah. And how when he died on the cross and three days later, he rose again and the tomb was empty. Yeah, it was an empty tomb. He was alive and that was very good news. It was really, yeah. really good news. Mm-hmm. That's bad news. What's bad news? Death. Do you know what? Death is bad news. Yeah. And it is really sad. Yeah. But do you know what is really, really good news? Resurrection? Yep. That Jesus is the resurrection and the life. That is the best news. Yeah. Hey, are we going to hear a Bible story about that today? We sure are. Pastor Bonnie has a great Bible lesson on just this topic. I can't wait. I think we should take a listen. Yeah, yeah, let's do it. Maybe we should go and eat some chocolate while we do it. Oh, you're speaking my language, girl. Amazing! Yay! Awesome craft for you guys this weekend. We are going to be making a wheel just like this one. Um, do you guys recognize this? Have we done something like this before? Yes, we have. But the reason why I really wanted to do this weekend is because this craft this weekend is because this has all the I am statements on it. Why would I want to know what all the 
the I am statements are? Because we've been learning them. And this way, this is a really easy way for you guys to remember them all. Because it's hard to remember six weeks of I am statements and we still got three more to learn. So this way, you can just turn it and it's, and it's got it all right there for you. And you can be like, oh, I remember when Pastor Dwight taught that one. I remember when Pastor Bonnie did that. Ooh, Marvin did something cool on that weekend. So that is why we're gonna do this one. All right, Maggie, how do we want to start off? By cutting it. By cutting it, that's right. So we printed these off already. You can go on our North U Kids website and the templates will be there for you. So you can print them off as well. So we have them just like this. And what are we gonna do again, Megs? Cut them. We're gonna cut them out. So you're gonna cut these along the circles. Try and cut on the line as much as you can because if you do, they will fit really nice over top of each other. Otherwise, they might one might be bigger, or one might be smaller, that kind of thing. So try and cut as close as you can to cutting around the circle on the black line. All right, so we already cut ours out, so it looks like this. Maggie, could you color those for us? Yeah. Yeah. So what could we use to color them? Crayons. Crayons, yep. Pencil crayons. Pencil crayons. Markers. Markers. How about glitter glue? Yeah. We love glitter glue, don't we? All right, how about you color this one, and I'll color this one. Can you pass the crayons? Sure. Here you go. What's the lucky color first? It's a little bit of blue. So you can color this however you want. You could color it in nice lines. You could color it in swirly circles. You can color it in whatever way you like. I mean, if you really didn't want to color it, you wouldn't even have to color it if you didn't want to color it. So you're gonna use lots of different ones. Like that, you can do anything you choose. Cause we all like to do different things. We don't wanna all color and make crafts exactly the same. We need to do them differently. differently. So we are learning about how Jesus is the resurrection and the life this weekend. And do you know what? He is. We're learning about Lazarus and how he died and how Jesus, everyone thought he was late. And they're like, why didn't you come sooner? If you had come sooner, Lazarus wouldn't have died. But Jesus had a plan and he loves us so much. Did you know that Jesus died on the cross for you and for me as well? He loves us that much. He gave his life and he is our life. He gives you, me, your parents, your grandparents, Maggie, he gives us life. He is the reason for living. How's it going, Mix? Good. Good. Do a little bit more coloring. I think I'm gonna make a sun right here. I think that would be fun. I'm doing the sunshine. La, 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 la. Do a little bit of a flower, maybe. Do, do, do. Okay, so we really only have one step left to do, and that is to put in the brad. So if you can see these, these are little, they are called brads, and they go like that. Can you see that? And then we're gonna put that, and they have a little bit of a pointy end, so you might wanna get some help from your parent or maybe an older sibling, maybe a cousin, a friend, to help you put it through. So you're gonna take this, you're gonna put it on top, and you're gonna try and match up the edges as much as you can. Okay, you wanna try and get it pretty even, because if you do that, then it will look a little bit better. Oh, so hard to put it through. You might have to do this one at a time. Yep, definitely. I am not strong enough to do two pieces at a time. There we go. You put it in the middle just like that. We're gonna flip it over. 
Take the two pieces, spread them, lay them as flat as you can, just like that. And it turns. And then you can read all the I am statements. It says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. You turn it again. I am the true vine. I am not of this world. I am gentle and humble of heart. I am always with you. I am the bread of life. So many good ones. So that you can remember what we've been learning about over these past few weeks. All right, guys, that is our craft this weekend. It was an easy one, and we'll see you next time. Boys and girls, it's Pastor Bonnie here, and I have another great lesson for you from God's Word. Now, over the past several weeks, we have been learning about the seven I am statements that Jesus made, which are all recorded in the book of John right here in the Bible.
Each time Jesus says, I am, he is saying that he is God. And each statement reveals to us a new part of Jesus's character and who he is. It tells us a little bit more about who he is. So far, we've learned that he is the bread of life and he fills up our spiritual needs. We've also learned that he is the light of the world and he lights up our spiritual darkness. And we learned that Jesus is the gate to the sheepfold and the only entrance to salvation. And that he is the good shepherd who sacrificed his life for our lives. Today, we are going to study a story that many of you are probably familiar with. It's a story some of you would have heard when we did our Easter lesson. In this I am statement, we are going to learn some deep and amazing things about Jesus. So buckle up. It's going to be a good one. But it's also a little bit of a sad one. It's sad because it deals with a time when one of Jesus' really good friends died. But... There is good news that flows out of our story. So hang on right till the end, okay? All right. Our story today is about a man named Lazarus, who was a very good friend of Jesus. He had two sisters, Mary and Martha, who were also faithful followers of the Lord. So when Lazarus got sick, Mary and Martha called out to Jesus, asking him to come and heal Lazarus. They knew that he could, but Jesus didn't come right away. And Lazarus, well, Lazarus died. Now, Mary and Martha were frustrated by this. And you know what? I think I would have been frustrated and confused by this too. They didn't understand why Jesus wouldn't have just come right then and healed Lazarus. But Jesus tells them that he will raise Lazarus from the dead. Let's read about that encounter right from the Bible, from God's word. So go ahead, open your Bibles to John chapter 11, and let's listen in as Emmett reads about Jesus's I am statement. Let's listen in. Hi, I'm Emmett, and today I'll be reading from the Bible. John 11, 21 to 25. Lord, Martha says to Jesus, I wish you had been here. Then my brother would not have died. But I know that even now God will give you anything you ask for. Jesus said to her, your brother will rise again. Martha answered, I know he will rise again. This will happen when people are raised from the dead on the last day. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Anyone who believes in me will live even if they die. So, did you guys catch today's I am statement? Shout it out right there if you did. Great job, that's right. Jesus said, I am the resurrection and the life. Now that is a very powerful statement. What does resurrection mean? Well, it means to bring back to life after someone has died. You see, when Jesus says that he is the resurrection, he is saying that he has power over death. He is claiming to be the only one who can bring and give life. Now that would have been a pretty shocking statement to his listeners. They knew that only God had the power to give life. But Jesus is saying here that he is God. And he too has the power to give life. And Jesus proved that he has power over death by raising Lazarus from the dead. Jesus brought Lazarus back to the dead to show that he can bring us back from the death we deserve from our sins. Let's watch a short video together and pay special careful attention to what happens when we put our faith in Jesus, who is the giver of life. Let's watch together. Lazarus was one of Jesus' really good friends. He lived with his two sisters, Mary and Martha. One day he started to get really sick. His sisters sent a message to Jesus to let him know. They knew that if Jesus got there in time, he would heal Lazarus. Jesus didn't go heal him right away. Usually when someone was sick, Jesus would go right away and heal them. But this time, he waited for some reason. 
In fact, he waited so long that Lazarus died. But eventually, Jesus went to go see Lazarus. Jesus raised Lazarus from the dead. When Jesus got there, Martha said that he could have saved Lazarus if he would have gotten there earlier. Then Jesus told her that Lazarus would rise again, but Martha didn't get it. And then he had basically the same conversation with Mary, but she didn't get it either. And then Jesus saw how sad everyone was, so he sat with them and cried with them. So later, they went to Lazarus' tomb, and Jesus told them to open it up. When they did, Jesus said, Lazarus, come out. And he did. Lazarus was alive again. Jesus brought a dead man back to life. Did you know that he would do the same for us? If we put our faith in Jesus, when we die, we get to have a new life in heaven with him. How cool is that? Jesus has the power to do anything he wants. Jesus performed a ton of miracles in his life. He fed 5,000 people with just a handful of bread and fish. He made the blind see and the lame walk. But of all of them, this is the craziest. If he can make Lazarus live again, then think about all he could do for you. Did you catch that, friends? If we, if you, put your faith in Jesus, we get to have new life in heaven with him forever. In 1 Corinthians 15, verses 42 to 44, it says this. It is the same way with the resurrection of the dead. Our earthly bodies are planted in the ground when we die, but they will be raised to live forever. Our bodies are buried in brokenness, but they will be raised in glory. They are buried in weakness, but they will be raised in strength. They are buried as natural bodies, but they will be raised as spiritual bodies. For just as there are natural bodies, there are also spiritual bodies. Now, I know that sounds a little bit confusing, so let's help. I'll try to help make it clear to you. Now, dying does not mean the end of our lives. That's sort of what this is saying. It means that we get to become something greater in Jesus, stronger in Jesus. So while it is okay and even appropriate to be sad when someone dies, we can also be happy for them because if they loved and followed Jesus here on earth in this life, they will get to live forever with him in heaven. That is an amazing promise, boys and girls. Now, did you know that this I am statement has two meanings? The first is that Jesus is the one who gives us life after we physically die. We just talked about that one. The second part of the re resurrection statement that Jesus made isn't about our physical bodies, but about our spiritual lives right here and now. Before we know Jesus and obey him, we are dead in our sins. You heard that right. We are dead in our sins. But, and that's a big stop right there, but Jesus died for us. He died to give us, you and me, life so that we wouldn't have to experience the death and the consequence of our sin. The next part of this I am statement is the I am the life. Not only does Jesus have the power to overcome death, but he has the power to give us life. Now, sometimes some Christians get so excited about heaven that they forget to live out their full lives here on earth. And we should be excited about heaven. We should look forward to heaven. But we have to remember that God gave us life here on earth too. Remember a few weeks ago, and in John 10 verse 10, we learned that Jesus came to give us life in its fullest possible way. Friends, when Jesus says, I am the resurrection and the life, he is saying that he is the power over death so we can live forever with him. And he has power over life so that we can be joyful and do good things with him and for him now and forever in eternity. He has this power because after he died on the cross, what did he do? Yeah. 
That's right. He came back to life. And if we choose to love him and confess our sins to him, he comes and lives in our hearts and in our minds and in our souls and our whole beings. And he gives us life forever too. Now that is good news. That is the best news that you will ever hear. Let's pray together now. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time where we could open your word, we could read it, we could learn from it, we could understand it. We thank you for the gift and the help of the Holy Spirit who helps us understand your word. We thank you that you are the resurrection and the life and that there is life eternal for us. But also because of you and because of the gift that you have given, you are able to give us life in its fullest today when we follow, trust, and confess our need for you. So help us do that now. Help us to put our trust in you. Help us to follow you. Help us to become a follower and a disciple of Jesus today. We pray this in your name and all God's children said, amen. Bye guys, see you next time. There, I'm done. Oh, Marvin, it looks so good. You did such a good job of coloring Grandpa Joe. Thanks, I did my best. But oh. you know what? I'm still pretty sad. Do you know what? You're allowed to be sad. It was a really sad thing that happened. Yeah. It was bad news. Death is bad news. It is. But do you know what is good news? What? It's Jesus. Jesus is the resurrection and the life, and that is a really good, good, good news. Yeah, he took bad news and he turned it into good news. Great news. Great super duper news. It's sure true. Do you know what? When we believe in Jesus, when we love him with all our hearts and ask for forgiveness and trust in him, we get to be with him forever in heaven. Wow, never ending life with Jesus? Never ending life with Jesus in heaven. Like never ending, it keeps going and going and going and going uh, okay. and going Don't and never. Oh, I'm sorry, That's I just okay. get so excited it's about spending exciting. forever with Jesus. Hey, maybe I should draw another picture of me and Jesus and Grandpa Joe fishing in heaven. That would be great. Big fish, no mosquitoes. The best. All right, I think that is a great idea. You draw your picture. We know that Jesus is the resurrection life and we can be with him forever and ever when we have a forever friendship with him. Yeah, and all this coloring has kind of tired me out. Time for a nap. I love nap time. It's my favorite. All right, boys and girls, that's all we have for you today. We love you. See you next time. Love you. <gasps> love you. Do you want me to get you a blanket? Of course. Here we go. Rock blanket. I hope you had a great weekend. We loved diving into God's word with you. I hope you have a wonderful rest of your summer. Bye for now.